But you can really feel that Maki suspension and everything underneath. You can feel the suspension, you feel the brakes. You know, I always say, if technology exceeds, it can't be equal. It's got to be better, you know? Now you're at the point where electricity can exceed internal combustion. Oh, yeah. Certainly in power and torque. Oh, and now sure. in range, if you're going just by, quote, a tank for it. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car featuring today, or the truck, I should say, 1978 Ford F100 Custom with a difference, a huge difference. This is... The ultimate resto mod, this, a lot of people can consider the future of hot rodding. This was developed in-house at Ford. This is an all-electric resto mod 1978 F100 Custom uh, called the Illuminator. Uh, let's meet Dave Parasek. Uh, Dave is uh, uh, Director of Future Electric Development at Ford. Uh, also the man that, of course, put the team together that won Le Mans, which is just, to me, just an amazing story, almost as amazing as developing a whole electric car, probably <laughs> just as much work, too. Yeah, now, it's great to be here, Jay. what we have here is a Mustang Mach-E GT performance package resto-modded into this 78 Fortress. Is that, that fair is to say? That is right, yes, and okay. this is our Illuminator concept. So our Ford performance team did a great job of taking the, the GT drive line, everything, the motors, the the suspension, all of it, and literally put it underneath this vehicle. Now, let, let me see. Now, this originally had, what, a six-cylinder, about 113 horse, something yeah, like that? Yeah, an inline six, yeah. <laughs> okay, Just and now we're like, what, 480? Is that 480, what so we basically quadrupled. Quadrupled the horsepower. <laughs> the horsepower. Okay, now, is it a Mach-E chassis, or has those parts been put in the chassis of a right. 78? So this is a custom chassis. Oh, it is? Yep, okay. it's a custom chassis. Uh, but it takes all of the components of a Mach-E GT Performance Edition and puts it all into that custom chassis and then underneath. Okay. Uh, the but the wheelbase of this is not the same as the wheelbase on the Mach-E. That's it? correct. Okay. So this is, a, a, again, a separate chassis. It is. All right. But again, with all the bits and pieces, every bit of it. And as we go on the inside of the vehicle, you're going to see that we've taken the Mach-E inside as well. All right. Well, I mean, it, it's great. I mean, this is the kind of thing that... Uh, People, I mean, trucks are a bigger part of hot rodding now as 32 Fords used to be sure. when I was a kid. Sure. What is under the hood here? Are there, do we see batteries? What do we see? Well, let's here? take a look. Okay. I have not looked under here, so I have no idea. This will be my first time. So you can see, Jay, there's a bit of a frunk, as we call them now. Right, right. A front trunk. And then you've got, you can see the suspension bits coming through, and you can see how we've this is the one one of the motors, you know, the Mach-E GT Performance, uh, all Mach-E's, but they have two motors. Right. Uh, and this, actually, this motor that you're looking at right now is the first electric crate motor, the Illuminator, that we have now in Ford Performance parts. And so we are offering this motor for sale. Right. So those that want to do restaurant mods like this, they'll be able to go and get that electric motor. And what will a motor like this cost in a crate? Just about $4,000. Oh, wow. So it's, a lot, it's cheaper than doing a internal combustion engine, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Now, yeah. there's, a, there's obviously other parts that have to come with it, with the battery and everything right. else, but from a motor perspective itself, yeah. I mean, I recognize these pieces here as just the standard Ford sort of pieces. So, yep. uh, But this does, obviously, the suspension of a Mach-E look nothing like this. Well, no, not the way that the, uh, the, the braces have come the together shock here. shock collars. Again, yeah. that's that unique chassis we talked right. about. But when you go underneath that, all of the, the shocks, the, the everything, the yeah. control arms, it's all Mach-E, right okay. out of the Mach-E. And does the engine sit this high in the Mach-E as well? It doesn't sit quite that high. Right. Uh, it's not a one-for-one -one translation. That's what I, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought, because this seems to be, it almost seems like that's where the motor is, even yeah. though, you know, as in right. internal combustion. Okay. Right. Well, again, as we thought, you know, this is bringing all of that componentry into something that is already established, you know. And so I'm assuming, and I will find out very quickly, it doesn't handle anything like a 78 Ford truck. It does not. No, so you've got, again, all your pieces sort of at axle height. Yeah, it's going to handle amazing. And what's your weight distribution? You have an engine front, it must be pretty good. Yeah, the weight distribution is good. Overall weight of the vehicle is, is high, as you can right. imagine, with that big battery that's underneath Is there. this, is it lighter than a Mach-E because it has no airbags or any of that? Well, that's a great question. It's actually slightly heavier. Really? Yes, slightly heavier than a Mach-E GT Performance Edition. Because I think the Mach-E has to have the door guard beam, the big steel piece. Yep. All those safety devices, all. but it just goes to show you that 
you know, the engineering back then and the engineering we have today, how much more efficient we can pull off some of the extra content that you're talking about. Okay. So it's actually slightly heavier. Okay, let's see. Hey, we can shut this again. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, looking at this on the street, I would just think it was a lowered, custom painted, you know, no chrome bumper, all that kind of stuff. F100. Right, I mean, well, that was part of the, the intention was to be able to do a resto mod, but still keep the essence of the F100. We didn't want to, but do it in a very modern package, you know. And like I said, when we go driving, Jay, I can't wait for you to hit that accelerator and what you're going to feel. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious because obviously the antenna is new, but it's still pretty old school. I love the wheels and the caps rather than just having some sort yep. of mag wheel on it. I love the body colored uh, or the trim colored wheels the master trim very yeah nice. so that's avalanche gray uh it's got copper accents on it as you can see yeah. those those wheels are 19 inch the original truck had 15 inch wheels right um and we've got 275 tires on it uh so you got some you know some good contact with the ground there to put down that power so you've got sort of sports car handling for lack of a better yes it handles like a mach -E. yeah yeah it really does because you've got the whole brake system out of a mach -E. you've got right. you've got everything out of the mach -E. Uh, so it absolutely handles amazing. Now you'll still get some of that vintage NVH, Jay, when we go driving. Right, right. <laughs> you'll still get you'll still get a bit of that, but you'll be blown away at, at how fast and how well no, it handles. It's really fun to see. You know, it just takes hot rodding in a different direction. When I was a kid, it was flathead engines, and then it was overhead valve engines, and then guys started putting engines in the back of the Barracudas and. You had rear engine, you know, right. little red wagon, all the kind. So now, and now they've made the the the, uh, the move to electric. And the fact that you could pretty much electrify any vintage Ford vehicle at this point with this engine, couldn't you? You sure? Yeah, yeah. you could. Yeah. 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 Now we obviously chose the F100 because of uh, a lot of reasons. One, just the success of the F series. I mean, if right. you think about it, this started it, and we just built our 40 millionth. F series about four days ago. Really? Yes. Wow, I thought that's pretty amazing. Just rolled off the assembly line. The amazing thing to me is, and we'll see that in a minute, you've got the full bed. You know, even the Corvair Ram side, which was rear engine, their, their truck, and yep. that was a pickup truck. Yep. You have the bed, and that goes up in a big Yeah, they had to compromise the bed. Yeah, they had to compromise the bed because the engine was back there. Right. I mean, the fact that this is a front engine and a rear engine vehicle. There's no indication that it's a rear engine vehicle at all. Yeah, we were quite surprised when we started to look at it as to how well it was all going to fit underneath here. Uh, clearly, we had to customize the chassis, but I mean, it, it, it fit pretty, pretty good. Yeah, and it'd be kind of fun to even put a camper shell on it. Yeah. You could do that and then yeah, run electric little... device. You know, you could... Right, because you've got all that power available. Yeah, you could watch TV at night or watch a movie or something. Yeah. Endless possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, that's something. And then as we go on the inside of the vehicle, Jay, you'll see the technology and everything that we transferred from the steering wheel to the seats to the infotainment to the, it's all come over from the Mach-E GT. I like the touches on it. It's not, I hate these crazy customs where, you know, you have chrome plated rotors and things you could never really have in real life. I, I like, sometimes when they go to the Roadster shows, Yep. They're show cars to the point where you can't drive them. Sure. You know, uncomfortable or different. Whereas this is something you can actually use as a truck. And even though I, I know it's, it's a fortune to do because it's done in house at Ford and so you, you have to start with a Mach-E, <laughs> right. it still looks like it's attainable. Obviously, the average person putting a crate motor in can't afford to do a whole Mach-E, but they can afford to do the crate motor and, and you know, the important parts to get you exactly. down the road. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty yeah, and cool. And we're going to continue to keep working on bringing that, that to the aftermarket, you know, for people who do want to do those resto mods. I mean, this is exciting stuff. I mean, yeah. you, you've got an F100, but it's the most modern. It, 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 you can never dream of the F100 being what this is. Now, something I didn't think about on the Mach-E, the air, this has air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Is, does the air conditioning run off the electric motor, or does it just draw power from the batteries and it's a separate draws power from the battery. Okay, so it, there's no power drive off an electric motor running a compressor, no. No. Oh, okay, okay, so it runs strictly off the power. Off the battery, okay. off the power yeah. of the battery. Right, very good, very good. Uh, what else can we have here? Let's see, let's take a look at the inside. I think we should. 
even hand crank windows. Look at that. Well, you're not going to get rid of those, Jay. No, you got to have those. I mean, that keeps it authentic. Well, I, you know, my favorite thing was a friend of mine came with his kids. Dad, look! And they hopped in my 65 Mustang and they cranked the window down. And then the kid, they, the kids, let me try. And the two of them were <laughs> racing each other, putting the window up and down. It really made me laugh. <laughs> well, it looks totally mocky on the inside. <laughs> you know, I have to admit, I kind of miss part of the fun of having a retro vehicle is the old gauges and the old speedometer, you know, you get near 100, it's doing this and it's all that kind of all stuff. Over the place. And a lot of places will take your old speedometer and modify it to run electric, you know, sure, or, or to run even, even satellite, but keeping the face, you know, right. Because now I know I'm in a modern electric vehicle, but it's kind of fun to have it look like an F-150 from the early days inside. Yeah, yeah. But this is obviously very cool because this is a custom vehicle. Yeah, and you'll notice that everything is basically transferred over from the 15 and a half inch center screen to that, you know, right. 10 point, like everything that you have in the mach -E is here. So that, but then you can see what we've done with the instrument panel here. This yeah. is, you know, it looks very F-100. It does look F-100. And you know, it's funny because back in the day you never got leather stitching and all this kind of stuff. No. I think that really started because of, there was a law they passed in America, any car more than $30,000, you paid a 5% luxury tax fee, because hmm. anything over 30,000 was a luxury car, uh -huh. unless it was a truck. So that's why they built the Lincoln Blackwood, and, that, and that's why they started building luxury trucks because with that five percent, you got the free luxury. You know, right? You, right. So, Makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was kind of a smart idea, I thought at the time. Very smart. Um, and I think that's led to now you just expect trucks to have every conceivable massage seat feature. Every and they do. And they do. I know. I know. <laughs> it, it's amazing. The idea of having something where you slam the door and it goes gung, 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 you know, and you, you put it in drive and you go, you know, it's, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Like I said, when we drive it, um, as modern as this thing is, yeah, um, you're going to get that, that, that old school NVH and it'll, it'll, it'll remind you you're in enough. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Very good. Is this a, is no, having adjustable no. steering? Oh. No, they had a problem with it. They have to replace that, that whole column. Oh, I so see. So unfortunately, you're going to have to drive it with it in oh, that position. That's fine. That's fine. Everything else starts exactly the same. Press the button here. Yeah, everything else does the exact same way. Yeah, yeah. It's all coming up right now. Your phone's starting to charge. Now, you didn't even have a cell phone in 1978. No, you didn't have a cell nor phone. Nor could you charge it. No, no, <laughs> nor could you charge it. You couldn't charge it because you didn't have one. Exactly. But they did have car phones. You know, a friend of mine's got a, a, a mobile phone. I think it's, it has to be late 40s or early 50s. It's an enormous suitcase. Wow. It's a big suitcase. And you really need to be strong because it carries these lead acid batteries. And you were something if you had that. That powered the, you know, or you open this suitcase and you make a call, you know. I mean, it, it was a radio phone, which, right. is, which is what they, yeah, yeah. Just before the bag phones. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But very, oh, of course, you've got every power steering, every other feature. Yep. Yeah, this is pretty neat. This is pretty neat. I'm looking forward to you driving it. Uh, well, let's uh, let's take it for a drive and see what she does. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It feels low. It feels like you're hugging the ground. Yeah. Well, that's that battery. Yeah, just because all the weight is down low. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. I see you still got the wind noise, right? We, you know. Well, the inch, that's interesting. It shows you how far aerodynamics have come. Right. You know, because this makes all kinds of wind noise purely because it's not aero, it hasn't been aerodynamic out. Exactly. You know? I mean, aerodynamic, you know, in 2005, we took that Porsche Courier GT around Talladega. We were doing 100 laps at like 190, mm -hmm. okay? And it was like, hey, 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 woo, 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 woo. You know, you could feel it moving around. Sure. Especially after about 60 laps, you're like, ah, I got, I got. And then 15 years later, I'm at Millbrook in the Corvette, and we did 50 laps at 204. And I'm, I'm having a discussion like this. Yeah. We're talking. Yeah. And it wasn't, I didn't feel I had to, woo, 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 woo you know, just lightly get into everything because the, the wind didn't move me around that much. And that shows you how much 
aerodynamics oh, have yeah. improved just in that short period of time. When we first took the Ford GT up over 200 in testing, yeah, the test driver came back and he had, you know, gotten a little bit over 200, and he came back and he said, "Boy, I could be eating a sandwich out there." Yeah, <laughs> Jeez. you know, I mean, it was it was uneventful. Well, it was tell you a story. I went to Millbrook. I'd never been there, and I meet with um, Taz Jukner. Yeah, yeah, Taz. Taz, I, I, Taz and, uh, so I, I said, I said, he and I are going to go do this. So I said, I said, Taz, before we start, tell me, uh, tell me the first time you went two hundred Corvette. He goes, Oh, I never have. I do never have. <laughs> so your first time was with a comedian who's never been on the track before in a car he'd never been in. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> he goes. Yeah, I guess so. And, and, but it was fine. It was fine. But I, I just assumed he went 200 right. three times a week. Right. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things. Um, you know, I I'm constantly out on the track, staying up on my my driving certification and whatnot. I think it's important when you're developing vehicles. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know? You know, maybe it's psychological, but I feel like I I can feel the the tailgate acting like a windbreak. You know. Feels like that. Huh? Well, it, it yeah. I mean. I take my foot off the Mach-E and I'm coasting. I take my foot off this and I find myself slowing down. Mm -hmm. Not so much from slow, low speed, but. Yeah. It's, uh, <coughs> it's pretty amazing though how you can, you can marry, you know, technology with, with old school and, and get something that's pretty special. Yeah, I mean, anything that saves a vehicle is fun for me. I, I like the idea of that. And to me, it's the ultimate recycling I mean, you're taking something old and reusing it again for the exact same purpose in a less uh, environmentally damaging way. Right. I mean, this doesn't use gasoline. It, and now I, you know, it, 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 it makes perfect sense. Well, it's going to be interesting to see where we get on in the aftermarket and, and how we do these rest, restorations in the future here and how we can, like you said, how we can reuse but do it in a, in a more... You know, it's way. just a different muscle you're using. You know, I was talking with some uh, of the electrical vehicle guys, you know, and I walked over in the midst, they were having a conversation. And as they're talking about voltage and electronics, I felt like my mother, you know. It, Can I get you boys something to drink, you know? Because I, I don't know what you're talking, I don't know what I'm doing here. Right. You know, there's no camshafts, there's no valves, there's right. no tuning, there's right. no, it was all strictly ohms and volts and the power I, I, oh, okay i guess so yeah. <laughs> but like i say it's always it's like rap and rock and roll they're both music and occasionally you can put the two together so you get a little bit of both like with a hybrid vehicle yep but this is still hot rodding i mean you're you're making the vehicle five times faster than it ever was oh yeah oh yeah and it's more efficient i mean it handles better it stops better so I guess it's a hot rod. It doesn't always have to have an internal combustion engine, you know? No, I agree with you. I mean, this is very much a hot rod. I don't know what the zero to 60 times were in the uh, F100 when it first came out, but I gotta, I gotta believe. Oh, well, I think you were using a wall clock on, for that. <laughs> we haven't had an official time on this one yet, but it's quick. Yeah, but I mean, it is funny because everything was single purpose. Everything now is multi-purpose, you know, in the old days, you bought a two-seater car to go fast, and you know you could get it without a radio and a heater, and because your job was just to go fast. Right. Now, I want a sports car, but I also have three kids, and I also want to be able to go to Home Depot and bring home some lumber. Uh, okay, so you get the SUV. So you need one thing to be all things now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come from that era of like I like a sedan, and I like to have a truck. I don't want a truck that's also a sedan, but. Right. I, Logically, it makes more sense, I suppose. I tell you, it never gets old just having that power anytime you want it. Yeah, and, and you can use it all the time. And then you got people that are into hypermiling, you know, where they drive barefoot with their big toe, trying to use <laughs> no air conditioner, windows up, just trying oh, to yeah. get the most mileage. That's okay. It's all it's all what whatever game you like. Sure. There's some serious hypermilers out there. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, the great thing is we're all learning in this electrical evolution here. It's yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. I was in the Tesla Semi, and that thing pulls 80,000 pounds. Jesus. And it's 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. And it was like being in a moving building, 
and you just well, well, the whole building thing, it just goes. It's amazing. I mean, I mean imagine something that heavy going like like that, you know? I know. That's that's. Think about how you know it wasn't that long ago that you couldn't even think about harnessing that kind of power for any length of time. Right. And look where we are now. I mean. Oh, I think the thousand miles on a charge is not that far away. A couple of years, maybe. Battery technology is moving quick, Jay. Yeah. Between the, you know, the chemistry changes that are happening. And you know, I have an alkaline battery at the at the garage there, that Thomas Edison himself built. And he sent a letter to Henry Ford at a dinner in Detroit saying, this is going to put your Model T out of business. He developed this alkaline battery so you could charge it, and when the alkaline wore out, you just dump it out, you pour in fresh alkaline, and you charge it again. So the batteries could be used over and over again. Yeah. And it was going to revolutionize the electric car. Of course, it never did because, A, most people didn't have electricity in their cars. Sure. Still a lot of people in 1909. Yeah. And, and, and there was no... 240 there's no way to make it you know but it's it, it's interesting to see that they've been thinking about it all this time it's only in the last couple of decades you've seen that taken through fruition yeah well i mean you know figuring out how to crack that nut if you will on the battery has been no small feat yeah yeah and we're all still working on it Open my window to adjust my mirror. <laughs> Do you need this one? No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, there's no little switch to. I know it's funny. I love watching you crank the window. That's. Well, this is a little stiffer than I remember them being. <laughs> well, you know what? I say that too uh, when I when I get in the car that has. I have several cars that. But is that just because we remembered it differently, or is that really how yeah, it was? Yeah, you know, I'm just getting older. <laughs> it's like pickle jars are a lot tighter now to get open. You know. <laughs> Yes, they are. Well, you can really feel that Mach-E suspension and everything underneath you. Can you can feel the suspension, you feel the brakes. You know, I always say, if technology exceeds, it can't be equal. It's got to be better, you know? When the Wankel came out, it was good, but it wasn't better. You had to check the oil every second fill up, and gas mileage was not as good as gas. So yeah. what was the advantage other than the lightweight? And, and eh, maybe a little more power, no torque, but a lot of power, you know? So consequently, the Wankel just fell by the wayside. Now you're at the point where electricity can exceed internal combustion. Oh, so yeah. Certainly in power and torque. Oh, and now sure. in range, if you're going just by, quote, a tank full, you know? Yeah, oh, definitely in the power and torque, though. It's not even a contest. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this feels really... It's just got a... A different rear end ratio because I've driven a regular Mach E. This feels faster because this is the GT, isn't it? This is the GT, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. GT Performance Edition. Yeah. I mean, listen to all that wind noise. <laughs> like we're in the eye of the hurricane, going into the eye of the hurricane. See, if we would have fixed that, then you would have said it wasn't an F100. I know. I know. <laughs> well, they weren't going that fast back then. They didn't have to worry about it. You know, that is true, though. They weren't going that fast. Right. Because when I drive, I've got a few. When I drive my 66 Lincoln Continental, 70, oh, this feels, 70 was fast. Sure. Most people drove 55 to 60 in the six, in the 60s. Yeah. You know, they're not, you know, here on the freeway, it's either bumper to bumper or people are going 90. Right. You know? Right. And the Lincoln Continental at 90, <laughs> you're, kind of, you know, you're kind of walking around a little bit. It's a little entertaining. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just pulls so hard. It does. It feels really good. Hey, here's a question nobody has asked. What's that? Is it harder to steal an electric vehicle? Because I haven't heard of any being stolen, be they Teslas or the new Audi or any of the electric cars. Thieves have not figured out how to do that just yet. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I think... Uh, have you heard anything about that? No, I mean, I, I think... I mean, are they inherently safer against that type of thing? No, not inherently. I mean, I, I think that we have been getting so much better as an automotive industry on creating interlocks in the right, systems right. so that it's become harder and harder for thieves, uh, you know. Believe me, we spent a lot of effort, Jay, on trying to figure out how to keep them secure. Yeah, I can remember the old days, I knew guys that had tons of keys because all the major manufacturers that have 
a few dozen versions of the same key, but then it would work. Right. You know, if you had all of them, and you tell, ah, I got one, and right. you, got, you, know, you got one that'll open. At some point, that was the security. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was security. Not anymore. Everything is interlocked. You can't yeah. do anything, you know, yeah. Remember the club that used to connect your pedal to that? Oh, the... yeah. And those were huge. They sold millions of they those really clubs. did. Now, is the electric motor currently for sale or it's coming it is. up for sale? No, no, it's currently for sale. And in fact, our first uh, run, our first production run uh, is all spoken for. Wow. Um, now, the volumes are lower right now, but, uh, you know, yeah, the demand has been a lot of interest in it. A lot right, of interest right. in it. And then what we're going to keep doing, Jay, is we're going to we're going to work on bringing more and more of a turnkey solution. Right. You know, the controls, the battery, like all of it. Right, right. You know, there's a lot of guys who are modding stuff right now, and they 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 can take the motor and they know what to do with it, but the average person would need some assistance. Right, right. Um, but we're working on how to make it more of a turnkey total kit, if you will. To me, I tell you, you know, I mean, I love the nostalgia of the old cars and I love the roar of the engines and all of that. But there's something super cool about this old vehicle with this new powertrain in it. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I think the one place you really would see it is in redoing old luxury vehicles like the LTD or the Lincoln, you know, and you could even do away with the noise it makes, which you have to do legally. Right. Does the engine make that same noise or is that just... No. When you buy the electric motor, does it have that noise? It's no, you, if you have to put the sounder on, this is right. what you're talking about. Yeah, right. you would have to put that on to become legal. Right, right. Yeah. But if you redo an old car, you'd be all right. Then you'd have something totally silent. Well, Dave, thanks for showing us the future of hot rodding. Right. Guys will still build gas engines. We will. It's just this is for a whole different crowd. You can build something totally different, and that's what I like. I mean, you know... Hot rodding is all about innovation, and it's a combination of nostalgia and innovation. And this is the classic example of that, so it's great. Dave, thanks again for Jake, bringing this thank to you. us. It's always fun to get an exclusive. Appreciate it. See you guys next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>